All right, so it's been a minute since I've done any work on the Jeeps, but today I want to make some progress. This is a high opinion Dana 30 out of a 94 Jeep Cherokee. I'm going to build this up and swap it into my LJ. Uh, I've already started cleaning it up and I cut off the upper control arm mount that goes right here, the stock one. Just use my plasma cutter, slice that off really quick and then clean it up with a grinder. Now I want to weld on a truss. So this is the truss from Barnes. And it has a new upper mount right here for the control arm. So I want to beef this up a little. I'm only going to be running uh, 35 inch tires on the LJ. So I don't really need a truss, but the LJ does weigh a little bit more than my YJ or you know a TJ or something like that especially with the hard top on it so I want to beef up the 30 just a little and I've never installed a truss before so this is going to be new for me but while I got it out and everything is you know easily accessible go ahead and weld this on right now it'll give me a chance to use my new welder too I got a new welder here uh, so I'll be welding with 220 for the first time as well all right so the first thing I'm going to do is get the truss fully set up. It has all these little tabs that need to go in. This is the upper mount here for the control arm. It goes here. So I'll get that tacked in place, fully weld it, and then I will weld it to the axle. I guess they gave me an extra one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see what this new welder can do here. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. This thing is burning into the steel. This is this is a this isn't a welder review by any means, but this is a Lincoln 211i. Uh, this welder came out two years ago, year and a half ago, something like that. I think it came out late 2022. Um, it's kind of like Lincoln's less expensive version of their uh, their multi-process, like their 210 or their 2. Uh, 215 so it only does MIG and flux it doesn't do stick or TIG but it's like $700 cheaper and I don't need TIG or stick and I have no no interest in having a machine that can do all three I really 
I'd like to have a dedicated MIG machine and a dedicated TIG machine at some point, but this is more than enough right now. <clears throat> Not too bad for my first project with this welder. That thing burns hot though, I think it's a little too hot. Alright, let's get this guy next. Just like that. It's angled towards the front. This is ready. I went over with the grinder and cleaned up a few spots that had some slaggy, you know, areas on there. This looks pretty good. I definitely got a, uh, or you know, I need more practice, but that's exactly what this is uh, for the most part, you know. So I don't see anything wrong with these welds. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're uh, they're definitely strong. All right, so the. Truss needs to be nine degrees back from the face of the diff cover. So I'm gonna zip this off real quick. I've had this off before. You know, I checked it before I bought it from the junkyard. But I've had the cover on just so nothing gets rusty in there because it's taken me so long to do this. So I went ahead and sprayed some paint inside the truss and on top of the axle tube where I'm going to be welding it. A lot of that paint is going to boil off whenever I weld onto it, but it's going to be really hard to paint inside the truss whenever it's, you know, actually on the axle. So I went ahead and painted inside of it and on top of the axle tube, you know, to help make that paint job a little easier later on when I'm done. Uh, while that paint's drying, I'm going to go ahead and prep these as well. These are sea gussets from Barnes. I want to beef those up just a little bit too, and these are pretty affordable. Uh, so I'm going to cut these out and get them prepped while I'm waiting on paint to dry. took my knuckles off here. Uh, took a little bit of effort. They had definitely been on there for a long time. These ball joints actually aren't crazy. Well, this one's kind of loose. Yeah, that one's pretty bad, but this one and the one on the top on the uh, passenger side are both seized. So, definitely going to replace them. Before I replace them, I'm going to weld these sea gussets on there so I don't ruin my new ones. I had to do a little bit of grinding to get it, you know, sort of flush, but I think this is how it's supposed to go on. So, I'm going to tack it, tack it on, put the knuckle back on, cycle the steering, and just make sure it's not hitting anything. And then I'll uh, fully weld it. All right, I got it, I guess as good as it's gonna get. This front one I think is perfect. Nothing hits at all, it, the, you know, the steering stop hits before the, you know, anything else. The rear, this unit bearing, or, you know, wheel bearing bolt, just starts to contact this right here. But I think that steering angle is already too much where the other side steering stop is gonna hit it. I don't know the, I'm going to go ahead and weld them on. If I need to notch this right here, uh, you know, that won't be that big of a deal. It's not, it's barely starting to hit. So I bet if I took, you know, like a quarter inch off right here, 
it would clear. But I've already grinded this back bracket down a good amount to try to make it fit better. And that's as good as I can do. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's not super critical to have them exactly perfect. As long as the steering, you know, steers and the axle shaft spins, then it's fine. Not perfect, and I had to start and stop a couple times to change my angle, but it's definitely not going anywhere. Alright, I'm ready to tackle the big part. I've got the truss mocked up, I drew a line around where it's sitting on the axle, and I'm going to go around and grind the paint from there, just so, you know, there's less contamination in the weld. It's already going to be a little more tricky since I'll be welding to uh, cast steel up here. So I want to get that metal really clean before I weld on it. I'll get it grind or ground down. I'll measure the nine degrees back from the face of the diff, tack it in place, and then I'll preheat the crap out of this pumpkin, fully weld it, well, you know, for the most part, and then wrap it up and let it cool. Uh, Barnes says in the instructions to not weld the entire thing. They recommend a one to two inch weld skip one to two inches and then another one to two inch weld skip one to two inches etc so i'm going to do that i'll uh get it tacked in place first and then see where i want to uh you know make make the welds the uh, brake cleaner that I just sprayed on fire. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Dude, how much brake cleaner did I spray? Didn't spray. Okay, so that one's on. Let's do this one. They say to do this one at 90 degrees. I don't see why it matters. There's no like suspension component on it, but whatever. I'll still do it. That's 8.96 right there. So that's gonna that's gonna be just fine. Uh, these are tight in place. These are good. I'm gonna bolt the. Uh, cover back on here so I don't get any spatter inside inside the uh, you know, the gears. I'm replacing the gears but I don't want any more junk in there than I need to clean out. So I'll get this uh, tacked in a couple or you know a little better. Start preheating right here and get this fully welded.
All right, so my camera died right as I was finish, finishing the welds on this, but uh, I did get it done and I wrapped it up in a blanket. And nothing cracked, so that's good. I'm happy with the way the welds look on the truss and on the upper control arm mount. I'm happy with the way the welds look on the actual center section on the housing. Those all look good. I'm not super happy with the welds down here that weld to the tube. I spent more time trying to get the angle of the truss correct and I didn't pay attention to how much of a gap was between the truss and the tube. So I was welding a pretty big gap and that made it where the welds are pretty ugly. But they are on there and they are going to be strong. At least I assume they will be. They just don't look as good as I feel they should. So I'm calling this done. I'll probably clean up some of the slag. There is a little bit. Not, not too much, but there is some. So I'll probably throw some paint on this. I want to change this bushing right here. Install this bushing. And then I'll start the re-gear uh, and the locker install. I also have lower control arm skid plates to weld on as well, but because I'm working with the axle up like this, I didn't, I didn't do that yet, so I still need to weld those on, but that'll be later. That's not that big of a deal. So that was a pretty fun welding project. I'd never done that before, and that was a good learning experience. I still plan to build tons at some point in the future, so now I've got an idea of you know, what to look out for and that kind of stuff if I do a truss on those or weld new brackets on them or whatever. So hopefully the locker and re-gear will be next and uh, then I can get this thing swapped into the LJ and re-gear the rear. I got a one-year-old baby in the house who's walking and talking, so uh, time is precious right now. <laughs>